Hello, hello, hello. Happy Sunday. Hold on, let me pull up my computer. Can you guys hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Good. Hi, Coach. Who? Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? Good, good. How are you doing? I'm good. Hold on. I just got to pull up my. All right. Um, so the. Ooh, there's James. Um, so the way we run office hours is pe basically it's just kind of a round table. If people have questions or something like that, um, we can answer or help or, you know, okay. James always has lots of questions. So can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me now? I'm making fun of you. Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> so i'm just glad i'm just glad i'm not the only one on here uh the finals are happening i'm just i was like oh man no i did it before i forgot about the finals so that's fine we can do it we do it about every other week uh james hey before i forget um mm. spend the money on the shooting machine yeah so the cost benefit they're expensive i get it yeah um the cost benefit will help if and the thing is, they'll use it. They'll use it. Um, you know, we we have limited gym time because we're sharing it with badminton, girls and boys volleyball. And we have one gym, so my question is, uh, what's the minimum amount of time, or not minimum? How often do you use it with your guys? In the summer? Yeah. Every day. All right, so we're gonna have to find a way, even if it's at seven in the morning, yes. to get it. Yeah, because they can just get reps up. It's it, it you know, and then if you buy the CT, it's got workouts, but the workouts are great. Um, but I initially use it just to get reps up. Okay, you know, yeah, we'll like figure you it put, out. You put five of them on it, and you you do it at fast speed. They shoot one and go to the end of the line. It's like a machine gun. I mean, you can't beat the reps. That's the thing. It's like all right, five for how long, so I can get more guys in, like five for how long then bring another five uh more. five going fast maybe around the thing if you're just getting reps up 10 15 minutes and i'd get them off because they'll and start then get getting, the next group on and there. then get the next group up and the thing is what i do is then eventually i do a passing lane too so i'll I, you can have 10 guys going five in one line five in the next line and the and the machine passes it to them they pass to the player and then it's just boom 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 um i can send you some dr dish drills and stuff that they that are good but if you're just initially i just have them getting used to the reps because my guess is you'll have some flat shooters yeah i do 10 10 guys how long would it take for the each one of those guys to get at least 300 shots up oh 300 shots or 200 let's go 200 an hour probably at least i mean it's a right. it's it's a shot every four or five seconds i can do the math for you but um you know that's you know let's say five seconds it's probably that's not five seconds that's 12 shots a minute um probably more than that i i can time it the next time i'm in the gym it's probably less than that it's probably like three seconds um and keep the number of balls in the rack they got to follow their own ball too if it bounces out that's one of my rules in my gym so when you shoot and it bounces out of the net you got to go get it um What's That's the optimum not. number of balls in the machine? Three to four is optimal. Okay. If you get five or six, it can get not jammed, but they can just kind of get, they go in so fast that they get stuck in the, so four, four works. If you go about four, to, if you've got a good shooting team, it doesn't matter because it's just going to go in. Um, but there's going to be, the balls are going to bounce out. I'm just telling you, especially if you're shooting long shots. Um, so then they got to go get those, but yeah. So oh. last thing on that, the Rebel, it's the entry level one. That's like fifty seven hundred bucks. So that's yep. the one we can afford. That's one. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Any one of them is good. Um, yeah. I mean, you're basically just trying to get reps, and I like pulling it away sometimes too. That's what I like the Doctor Dish because you can pull it away from the, and it can just be a passer for you. Um, but yes, it's I. I mean, again, it's a lot of money. I get it. But, and they'll, and they, and they'll do stuff like you can pay it over a year, no interest, all that kind of stuff. 
Um, we, I, I think they'll use it. I'm just telling you, I have three. I just think they'll use it. Like, we have two of them, and they're fighting over the two of them. Because it's just, we got three, but I don't use the old one very much to, because it kind of eats up the ball. It's really, it's one of those big, it literally almost broke my arm in it because it had this big metal thing that, anyway. Um, yeah, so, I, I, I mean, I what can I say? I own three of them. I, I, got it, yeah. got it. I have two Hondas in my in my in my garage. I like, hey, you know, it's like you're a championship coach. I'm following you. Okay, I I I, I hate to tell someone. Yeah, it's it, you'll it'll, you'll see a benefit. You'll you will see a benefit. Statistically, you'll see a benefit. Uh, don't just use it to just get shots up though. Once they get past the novelty of it and the reps up, then you got to use it to get the kind of shots you get in games. And those kind of things, but initially, it's just really good to get reps up. You'll become a better three-point shooting team. I will. That will happen. Now, can you do it off the move? Can you do it off a screen? Can you do it off a pass? Those things take rep, even more reps, but it will make you a better square-up shooting team. I, that I know. That's math. The stats teacher is going to tell you that. That's for, for given. Yeah. Okay. I feel bad saying that for that much money. Mm. But... <laughs> uh... All right, coaches, you got questions? What's the score? Anybody looking at the score? I took Golden State in five, so I might be wrong. 43-45, Golden State. Oh, no, 46-45, Boston now. Yeah. Man, Boston's like the perfect team. I'm just telling there's something. They just, they, they just, they pass, they're just like, there's something going on. I don't know. Uh, not that, not that, not that, uh, not that uh, Golden State's selfish, but mm-hmm. something. There's something with Boston right now. I don't know. I think the, yeah, I'm still pissed the Bucks lost to them, but yeah, they're balanced. <laughs> yeah, they're balanced. They're, they're just like, yeah. yeah. And then when Horford starts yeah. hitting three, it's like, what do you do? Yeah. And they were, when they were strugg- struggling early on in the season, I think um, a lot of guys got a lot of minutes with kind of, they, you know, so guys are used to stepping up. Guys got yep. experience. They probably normally wouldn't get experience. Yeah, they threw them to the wolves. Yeah, and yeah. I think don't underestimate what Stevens did with that group. Mm. Oh yeah, you know I mean? oh it's, it's always like that, right? Somebody lays the foundation, and then somebody comes swoops in, and, it's and like, he's oh, look what he's I in the front office. If they win it, he'll have a long job. He didn't care. He just wants yeah, to like. He'll but, still get some credit. That's yeah, good. <laughs> I think he should too. Yeah. How's everyone's summers going? My, we're still in school until th- this week. We have one more week, and then I get to uh, coach my guys for a couple weeks, at least until July. Uh, we're in uh, we're second week of summer right now in Florida. Uh, we got team team camps coming up this weekend, so we've been at it. We got the whole AU high school thing working, so we're we're practicing skill work, weight room. We're doing all that. Yeah, in Florida you have to get out because it's 175 <clears throat> degrees. So yeah, yeah. Well, we're, we have the gym, but yeah, yeah. We're, Is it air? I'm assuming it's air conditioned in your well, gym. Well, so yes, we we schedule our um, gym time, but the county still is a little stingy. They'll like we went in Saturday uh, to shoot, and they didn't cut it on. Like some days it just doesn't come on oh. they're sa- saving some money even though it's scheduled but most days we have it it yeah. would oh the floor would be a uh, because it's so humid it would be too slick to do anything if you know if they didn't turn it on and plus right. like in the locker rooms the humidity it would be so gross yeah. it's kind of they need to or else we get about four moldy. weeks of that humidity in wisconsin that's about mm. it like july yeah, I know. i'm from humid. minnesota so i kind of know what you guys are doing yeah, yeah. right yeah. now it was, it was like 72 today and sunny. Uh-huh. perfect day today. yeah oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not like oh, there. So going. now that's what i'm doing i'm working on just trying to get um i'm working on just trying to get well i got i got camp coming up too so i'm trying to figure out mm-hmm. camp and then um kind of working with my guys and stuff too so that's where mm-hmm. i'm at but go ahead if you guys anybody's got any questions or anything yeah i know I, I james got, always got, go ahead i go. got questions i'll, I'll let I them got go questions first. too go. okay I'll, go ahead I got, go um okay so i'm gonna 
fairly uh, new head coach. This will be my third season um, being a varsity head coach. And um, year after year in Florida, man, it's all about the running jump. And I ran high school and I ran the running jump in high school, but it's um, I deal with it well in the full court, um, but it's crossing over half court and getting set into my offense is where I'm like, I struggle. Okay. I'm struggling. So they, they're turning you over as soon as you get it past half court. So, yeah. So it's like, yeah, as soon as you, as soon as I cross half court, um, you know, they're jumping or whatever, we, whatever we pass, we jumping in up and I've tried. Um, okay. If your guy goes, you need to follow your guy and get to the space. Right. Or if your guy goes, cut but it's or if your guy goes screen away and get somebody coming to the ball but it's i don't know i'm just struggling um they're not trying to run the offense are they when they get it over half court that's well, the first well, thing don't have them run the offense oh You're, see that's okay error one coach error. So don't have them run the offense if they're running jumping you as soon as you bring it over half court like you're so here's the way you sell the boys or the uh, you, you coach boys right Boys? Yes, yes. Yeah. Sir. Okay. So here's what you tell them. You say, okay. when they do this to you, we're not going to run our offense. We're going to make them pay. We're going to make yeah. them pay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to attack. So mm -hmm. the problem is they're trying to probably, I don't know what offense you run, but they're trying to set the offense up and it's like trying, and they're, you're trying to set the offense up and they're trying to cause chaos. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> you want to make them pay for the chaos, mm -hmm. which is, attack the rim, flash you an open spot. Yeah. Um, you know, especially if it's in the corner, when you pass half court, there should be mm -hmm. somebody on the baseline. There should be somebody in the middle. There should be somebody to pass across to mm -hmm. those three passing lanes. But mm -hmm. you should say the first, if they're running, jumping us in the half court, the first three passes are attack, mm -hmm. uh, attack them because the problem is it's like, you're not going to be able to set your offense up if they're running. And right. Jumping. Right. Because, but they, but someone's open. Right. Right. Yeah. If they're running and jumping yes. you, somebody's open. Yes. Right. <laughs> um, so it might be the guy that's coming to run at them, but then they got to mm -hmm. cut. And as soon as they get it, they got to attack. They got to, yeah. So attack, they got to just look for that cutter. They got to find, the cutter has to sprint, find that space right away. And, and here's what you tell to the cutter. If you get the ball, you're going to be open. You're going to score. They'll cut. Mm -hmm. If you tell yeah. them that they can score, they'll cut. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is the best setup for that? So I've, I've tried a couple things. I've tried like a five out. I've tried a, a, a four high where I just set them up, set them up here. So we, we can see who, you know, see who's coming. And then we hit that guy. I've tried a two low, you know, so try, I like, try I like, first of all, I like two guards to bring it up. Initially. Okay. Two, oh, okay. Yeah, so I like, like a, a I like a, I like a two one two versus a run okay. and jump because uh, people are kind of in the right situations in a two one two. Okay, I seen that in your uh the full court version. Yeah, so do two the guys, same but... thing. Just imagine the okay. half court is the full court, but it's just shrunk down. Okay. So, and people tend to turn the ball over more in half court because there's less space, right? Right. Um, right. Because it's eighty four feet. If it was ninety four, we'd be okay. But it's eighty four. Right. So it's shrunk um, down. So it's, you know, it's half that. It's only 42 feet right. and half court. So um, put that, and, and, and I per, put your most athletic person in the, in the one. Mm, okay. They got to be able to move and find space. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and then if the, if the, it depends on where the run and jumps coming from, right. If it's coming from the baseline, if it's coming from the bottom guy of the two, one, two, then he's got to mm -hmm. cut. The, mm -hmm. Most often, it comes from that other guard, and then yeah, they just yeah. They, yep, they got to cut to that open space. But then the middle guy of the two one yeah. two has uh -huh. to go cut down toward the basket. Okay, so he's cutting down strong side. He's cutting down. Yep, strong, strong side. side. Okay. Yeah, right, yeah. Okay. So that leaves the guy. So let's say you're bringing it up the right side. It leaves yeah. the guy in the corner because he ain't gonna leave him. Right. And then and then if the other guard comes the is the one to run and jump, then he can cut it kind of as a cut to the top of the key and mm -hmm. then have your middle guy kind of cut to the mid lane line mm -hmm. just to give to give space. So you can't we don't want one guy guarding two. We you know that's okay. Right, um, right, right. So I'm thinking so in that situation with what with the middle guy's man, wouldn't they 
just stay and they, they, well they might but there's not going to be they're not they're guarding air so yeah. you, that guy is going to find you first of all they should all be op- cutting to open space okay yes okay <laughs> so the opposite guy if you're running a two one two and the ball is mm-hmm. coming up the right side that bo- mm-hmm. that opposite guy in the baseline needs to yeah. not stay in that baseline needs to cut mm-hmm. to open space okay i got you come i got you come come help yeah. Like, I got you. You know, okay. Um, don't stand back there. If you're two passes away, you're too far away. If I'm getting trapped, okay. So gotcha. if I'm in, if I'm in the top corner and you're in the bottom opposite corner, you're too uh-huh. far away because I can't see you unless I'm mm-hmm. l- unless I'm Kevin Durant. I can't see you. Right. So right. you need to cut so I can see you. Cut to space. Cut to air. Cut to openings. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then film is really good on that. If you can, if you can do that during practice, you can get a high film and then show them, right. hey, here's where you should have cut. Look at this mm-hmm. space, and they can slow mm-hmm. mow it. And then eventually they'll see. And then the selling point for them to cut is they're going to score. They're going to score. Me, they all want to yeah. score. They all want to be mm-hmm. Kobe. Yeah. They all want to score. They all want to be Steph. They all want to score. So uh, if you give them the carrot of I'm going to let you score. Um, they'll cut I'm just okay kidding. so that's i just have to change my thinking don't be stubborn like we're we need to attack it's not about you attack and the thing is good, good, the thing yeah. is if you attack once or twice and you score they'll get out of it mm-hmm. or if they don't get out of it you're going to get wide open shots right and you, you really it's hard to run in any kind of offense it is you run and jump or you know, if it's a one, three, one or a running yeah. a matchup two, three or something, it's a little different, yeah. but a run and jump. I'm making you, you I got to make you pay. You're just going to yeah. pay like, mm-hmm. and that's the men. And now you'll see it in them after you do it a little bit mm-hmm. um, that, okay, that's insult. So <laughs> teenage boys have big egos and mm-hmm. are very egocentric. Um, so feed on it. Like mm-hmm. this is insulting. They don't think we can break this. Yeah us over well no we're gonna score and dunk on them right you know so same play. same philosophy um with like a three-quarter court one three one yeah three quarter court you have a little bit more space so yeah cutting is a little bit easier those diagonal mm-hmm. cuts are easier yep. but then mm-hmm. i'd go i'd go mm-hmm. go um, okay nothing nothing stops a pressing team more than getting scored on and especially getting easy scored on yeah like <laughs> couple of dunks a couple of layups a mm-hmm. couple of wide open threes and then the other coach is like "Ooh, yeah maybe i gotta do something rethink that yeah i gotta rethink that there. maybe i gotta yeah. do something different mm-hmm. yeah okay you know i'm saying um, yep i got you okay score we got a score 52 50 warriors warriors it's half time I didn't put any. I didn't put any money on this, so I didn't. I'm not too, I'm not too vested. <laughs> not too vested. <laughs> All right, Craig, you've been quiet. You have questions, or is it Craig? No, Mark. Uh, no, Mark. I'm Craig. I'm Craig. Yeah, you're Craig. Mark's over on the iPhone. Yeah, Coach. Great. Hey. Thank, thanks for uh, for having us here. This uh, yes. this is quite an honor to talk to you. You're you're quite a mentor to me. And oh, I thank appreciate you. how you've oh, impacted my, my life. Well, well, oh my God. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. The yeah. check's in the and mail. So, my, my mom must have called you. Thank you. Yeah, that. she did. She's a nice lady. <laughs> she is a nice, she is a nice lady. So uh, my questions revolve around, uh, we're, we're, with a youth program, uh, we're, we're looking for this summer to, to do some things uh, three on three wise. There's some tournaments that are happening in the area. And, uh, and so we've got before our first tournament, uh, we've got eight, eight chances to get kids in the gym and just uh, a few questions kind of related to that. How, how would you format that gym time and how would you split it up? We've got boys and girls. There's probably going to be somewhere between 20 and 40 kids. And uh, you know, it's some, it's uh, so, okay. So, so the math teacher is going, how many, how many baskets? Uh, Six baskets. And how many adults? Six coaches. Yeah. Okay. And then you're going to have 40 in the gym with six baskets. 
Uh, well, that's what I'm wondering. Do we split it up maybe and, and have boys on one day and girls on another? I would. Or I would. maybe see what our, what if our numbers are, are closer to 20? Then, then we would probably want to combine it. Do yeah, we, four, do four start... in a basket. You can get a lot of work done four in a basket. So 24 is like the magic number. Um, you know, you get to six, it can get a little crowded. And especially if you're working on stuff like layups or things like that. Um, I've always found four, maybe five. I've pushed it to five. 30 is my max. I'll never go above 30 with six buckets. Um, so if you're at 40, it's going to be hard. It's going to, it will be yeah. more than controlled chaos. Um, sure. And is it six? Is it like, is it like three, three boys coaches, three girls coaches kind of thing? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So three coaches with 20 kids would be perfect. Okay. I mean, it would just, you, you could just get so much more done. Um, now, I don't mind the boy-girl. I don't mind them being together. It's more of a number thing. If you had the space, I wouldn't mind that. Um, mm -hmm. So the mixture of that doesn't – I mean, I don't, I don't really care about that. Um, but I do – if you're at 40 – you're going to, it's going to be hard um, for them to get any, for, yeah, it's going to, I mean, and what great, what oh, the second question, age levels, uh, uh, 10 through 13 year olds. So, so fifth through eighth grade, fifth through eighth. Um, Ooh, that changes it a little bit. Um, Cause younger is younger is definitely harder. Um, there's a big difference between a fifth grader and an eighth grader. Um, there is. There is. So um, maybe we split it up in age groups. And that's yeah. how it's going to be in the tournaments. There's, there's two brackets. So it'd be the seventh, or the seventh, eighth graders, and then the, the fifth, sixth graders. Yeah, that's what I would do. On a team. That's what I would do. Because I think, again, just thinking out loud, that's what I would do. Because I think some of the skills you're going to want to work on when fifth and sixth are going to be different than seventh and eighth. Like seventh and eighth, you could get to the point of teaching some screening stuff, even three on three ball. I mean, fifth, fifth and sixth, you're still going to be doing some of the fundamental dribbling, you know, how do you attack, blah, blah, blah. Um, so yeah, I think that that's what I would do. I would personally, if I, I, even if the numbers are low and you only have 12 and 12, it, I'd rather have 12 seventh and eighth graders together. Um, Cause you'll get a lot more done and you'll teach them a lot. Um, well, you know, you so can go we've got two hours each night. Would you, would you do an hour each so that we can have, still have the two nights per week? Yes. Leading yes. up to the tournament. Yes. Okay. I think an hour, hour, an hour, an hour yeah. is plenty. Cause what you're going to do is you're going to do, you want them to play some, especially if it's a lot of three on three. I love three on three before high school. So I think that's awesome. Um, but you know, again, you're gonna you're gonna play it by ear with your numbers. You might have twelve kids. All right, we're gonna play some two on two instead, or something like that. Sure. Um, no, so for an hour would be great. I'd do about I would do when I've done that in the past. I would do about thirty to forty minutes of, you know, shooting, dribbling, ball handling, those kind of things, and then the other twenty minutes I'd let them play. I'd I'd let them play okay. um, because that answers that. Yeah, because then you can, and you'll mix up teams and you can give out Gatorade, you can do all that stuff, but it's more, you you want, you know, you want some small side, when you're teaching them dribbling and those kind of things, you want some small sided games and playing to learn, but you definitely want, you know, especially in those age levels, you want them to play some. Um, right. So, you know, yeah, 40 minutes is a, is a good, that's like a class period. That's a good focus stretch for them and then 20 minutes of fun you know whatever you want to do with that i mean you can do multiple that sounds things. great um but yeah i think i think breaking it up by the age gravel and and boys then i'd leave it boys girls that doesn't really matter at that point um but i yeah and i wouldn't play anything more than like if you're doing three i wouldn't play anything more than three on three at all no reason to do five on five none because i mean yeah, yeah. It's baskets, it's time, and, and and I've said this on multiple podcasts, like two on two, three on three is the perfect game to learn because you can't yeah. hide. Three on three is the perfect game because they all are going to touch the ball and they all are going to – you can't hide. 
for sure. <laughs> you for know, sure. five on five, you may not, you might not touch the ball and you might not get a right. shot and you might not have to rebound and you might not have to play defense. Three on so three. Do we, sorry to interrupt. Do we, t- do we teach them any sort of sets or anything like that? No, I wouldn't do any of that kind of stuff, but I would work on Just, some man defense. And then when they're okay. playing three on three, I'd put a coach there to help them with, you know, especially the seventh and eighth graders, oh. you know, what does ball pressure look like? What get to the helpline, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, if you're, I, I'd have a coach on each bucket, not necessarily even calling the fouls. I would let them do it. It would be more about, you know, all right, timeout. Let's you played for five minutes. Let's talk about this. What is, where should you have been defensively when the ball is there and they set a screen and what do you do? So some of those teaching things is that, that's what I've used it for. And I think it's been very helpful. Um, it's hard because they're competitive and they want to play and keep score and blah, blah, blah. But there's going to be a lot of teaching get going on in that a lot. <laughs> um, right. Yeah. Cause some of, especially the fifth and sixth graders, it's like, you know, they might not even know where to be defensively in some respects. Um, and there's more space. So, you know, all that kind of stuff's got to like, keep your ball, keep your man in front of you, you know, don't let them, are they right-handed push them left all these things they can help them when they're playing three on three in these tournaments. Um, you definitely want to, you know, you want, or whoever's the lead coach wants to do some of that on top of when you're playing the games, I think. Makes sense. Yes, for sure. So, so how would you, how would you promote this to, to get, as we're getting the word out and, and putting together a flyer to send out, you know, we've got a bunch of email lists that we can send it to. And um, what, what would you skill sessions leading up to three? Yeah, I would, I would, I would market as skill sessions and game sessions for an hour. How many ever weeks you're going to do it. Yeah. Learn the game of basketball. Skill session. And then, yeah. And then as we're getting ready for this tournament, we're going to we're going to put teams together. We need to register our teams. Would you recommending or would you recommend going with one real strong team or all even teams? So I or, think I uh, think the older grades, I would try to put better teams together. Um, it's similar to uh Madison, I, I don't know. I'm in Madison, Wisconsin. We have the largest outdoor swim meet in the country in July. It's called All City. And there's like 30 pools that come together and have swim meet. Um, it's crazy. It's like awesome. three days of swimming. There's like cool. at the at the at the eight year old, I'm getting to a point on this, but anyway, at the eight year old level, um, there's like a hundred heats of eight year old swimmers that wow. doing the freestyle. It's crazy. Anyway, at one pool and there's tents and it's all, it's a crazy thing. But the, the why, why I brought this up is it's, it's an awesome thing because you are put in the heat that you're supposed to be put into. Like you're swimming against people, uh, seven other swimmers that have times close to your time. So no one's getting blown out. The best swimmers are in the top heats, you know, cause they're going for an all city title but nobody cares. Like you get a hit, you get a ribbon. So what, what I'm saying is you want to put those best three because they're going to, they're going to play against the other best three in the turn. I mean, you want uh-huh. there's a point where now in fifth and sixth grade, I probably wouldn't, I mean, I probably wouldn't worry about it quite as much. Um, uh-huh. the, again, it's going to depend on the dads and who's running it and stuff. But definitely at the older levels, I would, by an eighth grader, you're going to be in high school next year. I would definitely try to put a couple teams together that can are solid. Um, sure. In, in seventh and sixth, you know, I might put two good ones and an average one kind of thing together. You know what I mean? It's like, I want to yeah. load up a team necessarily. Um, and again, sometimes it's personalities and things like that. But I, I yeah, I, I just think that, yeah. I don't know if there's flights and there used to be flights when I, the Gus Macker used to have flights and all that kind of stuff. I don't know if there's like levels for these things. There is. And, and I'm not up to speed on some of that. It's uh, this is the first year for, for this one that they're putting on in our area. So uh, yeah. We'll so you, you might want to, you might want to find out if there's flights. Cause like there's an A flight, a B flight. I think, 
again, I'm aging myself with Gus Macker, but there used to be like even a professional flight, I think. And then there used to be a collegiate flight and a D3 flight and a high school flight. And like, so they tried to put you in the right level. Um, yeah. So you might want to check out about that. that site, but it doesn't go into detail. So I'll have to, to look into that further. Yeah. Yeah. Cause if there's flights, then you definitely, if there aren't flights and it's even, it's, uh, you know, um, anyway, and, and, and to be honest with your mom's calling and Johnny wants to be with, you know, Sam on the same three, on three team, whatever sure. you're going to get those calls. Trust me. They got their buddies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can, can he be with someone? So it's like, ah, oh, God. Yeah. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I have an assistant coach that deals with that. I don't deal with that anymore, but yes, that's a, that's a thing. Hey, so one James, more it's, yep, one you. more, go oh, ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. I, I've, I've been wanting to know this for a long time. Uh, who won between Akeem Olajuwon and Larry Bird? Larry Bird. One-on-one. One. Okay, Bird good. That, okay. All right. Now I know. Now I know. Yeah. yeah it was a five star. I'm actually a little surprised. I mean, yeah. Uh, I, it's probably probably yeah celtics are winning right now right what's the score i know i know i yeah i'll never forget that that was like crazy my team won that league too that it was crazy that was crazy i i kind of missed that era of like the bc five-star camp thing um kind of died anyway um i got to meet him too the garfunkel that ran five star and stuff before he died and kind of knew one of my one of my guys and but anyway hey so james when we're done i need uh i've got a come sh some shoulder i got a shoulder question i gotta ah. ask you so when we're done with the basketball I'll, i gotta go i gotta ask you a medical question so okay sounds good sounds good right. i have a question yep. so um <clears throat> well a couple of questions so one is i really love the um emails that you send where you kind of Put together all the different drills that you think are best and we i it was phenomenal one of them i i just looked at it was the uh damatha like finishing drill okay um, but you, you i don't kinda... i don't even know if anyone reads the emails but oh I'm yeah, yeah yeah i do okay. i do okay so <laughs> my question is organizational like where do i find your conglomeration of all the best drills where you like send out these emails do you have that organized somewhere no i don't like i don't okay, okay. so all right all right, so that I was, was one. I, I'm surprised that my yeah. Anyway, if you saw my office right now, oh my god. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, that's that's one of the things I'm I've like like you email me about me closing down T troops. So I'm closing it down. July is going to be my refocus. Like I'm not letting anybody else new in, and I'm going to refocus. And that's one of I got like six things I got to do, and one of them is a drill thing. Like yeah, the best my, drills that you send out on your emails. Yeah, like, so I'm, I'm gonna like, do where's some, that organized? I want that. Yeah, so, I know, I know. There's a lot of people that want that. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna that try. Way. That's like, yes. Yeah, so July, I'm gonna go to Wyoming with my son. But then after when I get back, July is gonna be like lock myself in my office, see my players, and that's it. Like I'm gonna work on that kind of stuff. That's why I'm closing it. I don't want to deal with any like that stuff. Like you know daily membership stuff it's like you're in or you're not in go yeah let me do my stuff yeah um so that's yes yeah, so, but i will take care of you i will i as soon as i get that done i'll 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 email you and let you know oh it's good it's good and then the other thing too what i'm i'm just kind of uh <clears throat> you know during regular season it's pretty it's pretty easy to hold kids accountable um, because there's you know league games and it's the school but in the off season they got so many options mm -hmm. I was having a conversation with a, a rival coach today and he goes man I call practices and no one's showing up right now and I'm like dude these kids have a million things that they can do I'm getting about 15 kids to my workouts but not consistently nope and my nope. question is so so here's my theory and I've changed on this theory okay give me your theory um First of all, we're coming out of the pandemic. So you got to give the kids a little bit of a break. That's my first, that's a side note. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, it's just the world's slowly coming back to normal. So that's the first thing. Second, and they're all, they're all a year behind. So the juniors are like sophomores. The sophomores are like freshmen. They're all a year behind. I don't know how these seniors are going off to college, but they're all a year behind developmentally. I can tell you that from a teacher standpoint. I used to lose sleep over summer stuff. Yeah. 
you used to literally lose sleep. Yeah. And I don't remember. Maybe it was about 10 years ago. Maybe it was 15. And it was like, I just kept banging my head against the wall. And it's like, so here's the conversation I have with my guys and come the end of the thing. It's like, here's what, here's what's going to happen. And here's what we're going to do. And I hope you come <laughs> okay. and, and I'm going to be there. You know, I can't do anything until the end of the next week because of our rules. But once that is, I'll be in the gym, I'll be at camp. I'll be there in the mornings. I'll be at most of the league stuff. I'll be there. But, and I hope you come, and I hope you come. I want you to come, but I know that grandma's got her 75th birthday and I know you want to go hang out, go do that stuff. That's fine. Um, so we have a conversation about if you want to get better at things, you have to put the time in. And if you don't, you won't get better. So don't come to me in December and say, why am I not playing more? And why is my jumper? Why am I shooting 27%? That's the discussion. We're not going to have that discussion because I'm going to point back to, I didn't see you at all this summer. Um, and you didn't, you weren't working on it. So I only get them for about three weeks in June. And then I lose them in July. Cause they're gone. Like they're off in AAU and they're just gone <laughs> other than some skill work. Um, so I got, I got them for about two, three weeks. I pick one or two things. Like I'm going to tell you right now, when I start coaching them in the summer, it's going to be rebounding and it's going to be their man defense. And that's all I'm worried about. Mm. Literally. That's all I'm worried about. I'm not worried about our, I'm not worried about our, I mean, I am worried about our offense, but I'm really not. I'm worried about whether we're playing hard and playing man D and whether we're rebounding. Those are the two things. I think uh, I, I, it's two and a half will probably be turnovers because we had a little bit of turnover issue last year. And that's it. When I coach them, that's the only three things I'm worried about. Hmm. Literally, I'm not going to worry about out of bounds plays. I'm not going to worry about screening. I'm, I'm going to worry about are you playing hard and deep man defense? Are you rebounding? And are we not turning it over? And if you're not doing one of those three things, you're probably going to hear from me. But other than that, go play. Let's go. Let's have some fun. It's summer. Let's go. Where are we going to eat after this game's over? That kind of thing. Um, Perfect. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I thought. That's what I. That's what like, I'm doing. Yeah, it's like, the, and here in again, stats teacher, math teacher, the amount of improvement you think you're going to get on your offense is about this much. Like it's not. It's summer. Like. I've had, I've had years where I'm going to run a practice and I'm going to do this and we're going to work it. It's summer. What are you talking about? Like, they're not focused. It's like, it's like bringing them into my math class and let's sit down and do an hour of math. Like, what are you talking about? They don't want to do that. Like, they're not going to do that. They would do it if they thought it would help, but they ain't going to do it. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, the improvement level is like, Again, if you, and, and I, don't get me wrong, there's things I'm going to try experimentally, like offensively and some other things, pressure to see, I want to basically see, can that guy guard that guy? Can that guy do this? Can, how, how are my youngsters in relation to my older guys? So I'm, I'm evaluating, don't get me wrong, but I'm not like, it's not like, oh, or, yeah, it's not the nuance of it. It's macro more than micro. I think sense. I've learned. I think I've learned. I'm on the okay. right track. Yeah, you're on the right track. Don't lose any sleep over this. But I'm telling um, you. <laughs> so, so coach, the the years where you've had a lot of success uh, during the season, what did your summers look like? Did you have a lot of buy-in? No, they were just hooping. Days? They were just hooping. They're all hooping. They were just hooping. Yeah. And, and 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 my guys are hooping. Like they're almost hooping mm -hmm. too much. Definitely, they're definitely hooping too much like you know, off on their own my thing is like they're picking up bad habits wherever they're hooping and they're not working on because they all say like if they miss workouts with me they say oh, i was doing this or on my own and then so i like, get okay. it so that's right get them to play hard yeah get them to play defense mm -hmm. and get them to play together mm -hmm. like if they know that you want them to play hard like you mm -hmm. can clean up the messes like right trust me this, the bad habits they learn, and it takes me till Christmas to clean up the bad habits. Mm -hmm. I can clean yeah. up the bad habits. Okay. If they're playing hard for me. <laughs> mm. If they're playing D, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? You just pick your, yeah. pick your one or two, whatever it is. Maybe your guys don't shoot threes well. Then mm -hmm. we're going to shoot threes. So we're going right. to get, we're going to go from 27% to 35. Mm -hmm. Great. Pick something. You can't be right. like I was telling coach, it's more. Mm -hmm. 
macro rather than micro. That's what it is right now for us yeah. is defense and shooting. It's yep. like, you know. And, what and that's have, what, like, you, know, you better get yeah. in the gym and get some shots. And the thing is, they'll get in the gym and get shots up if you get mm-hmm. on them because, because they want to score. Mm-hmm. No one, no one's the defense is where you're gonna have to step in, right? And right. no one, they don't really want to play D, right? Like they want to score, they want to have 25, they want the girl mm-hmm. waiting outside the locker room afterwards. They yeah. want that's what they want, so mm-hmm. they think that's the ticket. Well, that's great, come in and get the shots up if that's the ticket, and then I'm gonna teach you what the other half of the game is, and then that's what will win it with this. It, I'm it, telling you right now, yeah. if you can play good man-to-man defense huh. from the tournaments I've won in Florida, you can win. Yeah, we have, beat, we have beaten we have beaten professional guys. We have beaten high-level guys mm-hmm. in in a couple national tournaments in Florida. And you know why? Because we mm. defended. We defended. Mm-hmm. Okay. We could we could score already, but we defend. We stopped them. That's what we did. We stopped them. We took them out of mm-hmm. what they wanted to do. So that's where mm-hmm. I'd have that laser focus that we're going to defend. Yeah, that's kind of what it is. I mean, the culture right now in Florida is the teams that are going to get more talent state, than you, and I'm going to out hoop you is what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, you know, like they, they're well, first of all, it's a big recruiting culture uh, here in Florida, um, and they play year round. Like I'm, I'm trying to give my guys like time off. Yep, but you like, have to think about doing something that no one else is doing because all they're yeah. doing is going, going out and hooping. Yeah, right. up and down pressure. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. yeah. That's what everybody in Florida does. At least that's right. my observation. No, that that is it. Like, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to come yeah. down and I'm going to run a matchup zone, and I'm going to take yeah. 34 seconds to the next time mm-hmm. down, and I'm going to frustrate the crap out of you. Yeah, everybody's doing this, and we're yes. going to do this. So mm-hmm. that's where you got to figure out what your secret sauce can be. We're going to be the mm-hmm. best three point shooting team in the county. Mm-hmm. we're gonna yeah. be the best defensive team we're gonna whatever it is mm-hmm. uh, and again purely i'm florida is a huge state i'm generalizing but with the teams in southern florida and miami and ocala and orlando yeah. that we played they were yeah. just hooping literally they just, yeah no that is that is they athletes it ha- athletes not much hooping. has changed yeah, okay. not much. And, and and they so, play really so hard. Bring, I'm going to bring athletes down that are going to play pack line against you. Now what? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. okay, yeah. let's go. We'll hoop. Yeah. We're just not yeah. going to. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, they I, I will say that they like they we do. I don't know. In Minnesota, we well, in Minnesota, when I was in high school, we did the fall league. But in Florida, they're doing the summer league. Uh, they do the fall like the high school teams stay together year round and it and i feel like it's too much it is too much but but and I'm your trying big to, bodies can't take it man you're gonna have yeah, injuries for big bodies you know, so, right right so i'm trying to figure out like how to build continuity you know and t- because i feel like that that's an advantage that we don't have is that first i'm out of school i'm in central florida near disney we get a lot of kids coming and going a lot of trans Kids coming in, kids coming out. So I'm trying. We're to... down there. We play. We're we're coming. Um, we're we're not coming to send. We're going to. We're playing in the villages. Oh, the villages. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we played there. Yeah, that's but we place. played. Uh, we won a Windermere one three years ago. The Windermere. Windermere yeah, Windermere Prep. I live in Windermere, Winter Garden, Windermere area. Yeah, yeah. we won that Windermere, Windermere one three or four uh-huh. years ago. We had no right winning that. My son was on yeah. that team. How good could we? Oh, have really? Been? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that was so, like. Oh, yeah. Talk well, about distractions. Know. Talk about distractions. If you're close to Orlando, what are you talking about distractions? Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I know. So it's 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 a lot. Yeah, you it's go a down lot, I, but... you go down I you go down I four, you get distracted in 37 seconds. Now the yeah. traffic's horrible on I four. It is. But, yeah. Oh, it's horrible. It's horrible. Right. But oh, it's like driving in Florida in general is horrible. Yeah. Yeah, but talk <laughs> about distractions. At least they got rid of annual passes at Disney World, so the guys can't have annual passes. Anymore. Yeah, but it, it is a lot to do and a lot, you know, and the, you know, I get the guys who really want it show up, but it it is, you know, uh, I don't know. I feel like it's been a struggle. I, I guess that's another question I have with you is how do you keep your guys at your school? I don't know how the transfer culture <laughs> is in Wisconsin, but in Florida, we have it, a bunch it, of pop-ups. It's there. Drivers. It's there. It's definitely there. Yeah. Um I yeah I don't really worry about it anymore because we've been winning. So if okay. you win, they'll come. Like what is the what is the uh, bill, uh, 
feel the dreams. Yeah, you know, yeah. They, you win, they'll come. Um, True. But but you are in a whole different world. Oh, yeah. Man. Ooh, that's like Texas, it's it's right? we have a lot of pop-up charters pop-up privates yeah. that really aren't school they're just like basketball academies you know and the coaches tell them hey they're going they do you want this yeah, I know. yeah I know. and I'm the, I'm the type of coach to be like yo I'm very realistic with them you know right. I you know I, I talk to them about you know we, we sit down and we compare like okay who's going where what's your GPA What's your what AAU could team could you make? Could you make that AAU team with all those high level guys? You know, like right. You know, and so I don't I don't sugarcoat things. You know, but I do have strong relationships with them. But what what's been the cycle is we train them up. Really, we get them good from freshman to junior year. And then they, they leave. Really, yeah, they do really well AAU. Then everybody sees, oh, they're good, and they start recruiting them and telling them whatever, and then they get them. You know. That's kind of been the thing. That's a tough. I got. I got. I got. Let me sleep on that one, Coach. Because yeah. you're right. You 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 make them better, and then someone comes in and steals. Yes, them. and they're it's doing literally they're doing like the transfer portal. Them. Yep. So we get them really good, and they go out and they dominate in AAU. And the coach is like, "Oh, who's that kid? Oh, Poinciana kid. Oh," and they don't notice them when they first get here. They the coaches don't worry about them, but we so we know we're doing the right thing as far as our skill development, but. You know, and I've, I've tried to think of things like maybe we need to just really emphasize like our, our record for the thousand point club. So if you stay here, you're striving to. Yeah. And I think part, part of it is, I think part of it is you've got to start making connections with college coaches and you got to start making connections with the parents. You got to literally convince the parents this is the right spot. I think that's mm-hmm. your, I think that's your lean in. Yeah. Like, like, I don't want to leave home. Like, I don't mm-hmm. want to leave my friends. I don't want to leave right. coach. And it's like, if you get the parents, because the kids aren't really making the decision. The parents are making the decision. Well, no. Some of these really? kids here, like I had my best player wow. last year, the parents said, hey, we're letting him make the decision. <laughs> like, he's a 16-year-old kid, stays up till 3 o'clock in the morning playing video, like probably went there because they had Nike jerseys. Like, you know, so it's – but you know and what? Just, you're not. I'm gonna tell you right now. It's like yeah. I, I, this is hard to hear, but you're not gonna win the big ones with those kind of. You're not like unless yeah. they're five star. Kentucky's coming. Florida. Yeah. Like, it's like it's it's like um it's like the movie Up where the dog goes mm-hmm. squirrel squirrel squirrel. They're just gonna they're yeah. gonna see the new flashy thing and that they're just mm-hmm. yeah. they're not gonna be there the last three minutes of the game when you need them. Yeah. Right. Right. So mm. I, I just put my head down. I do the right thing and it will take care of itself. It is just control what you control. That's what control I've been Control the to controllables, think. Yep, baby. Yep, that's what if I've you, been trying my to My theory do. is if you want to leave, leave. Like, then yeah. you don't, then that's I fine. I tell them, yeah, I tell them all the I time. Know, we want volunteers, not hostages. We, you know, right. I tell them that. I've always said it's that. It's just to kids. tough. It's a tough pill to swallow because you invest so much in the I skill know. development and like trying to raise them. Like, you know how it is. You I know, know how pour it is. so much in. Oh, yeah. It's, it doesn't, not that it doesn't sting, but it's like, I've told parents, it's like, you have to do what's best for your kid. I did what's best yeah. for my kids. You're going to do what's best yeah. for your kid. If it's leaving, leave. Like, yeah. that's a, I'm not going to feel bad. And if a coach right. calls, I'll say nice things about your son, but whatever. Yeah. Gotta, you gotta always, do what you gotta do. always. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Always. Yeah. You know, I have no problems with that. No, yeah. none. So I guess that brings me to my next question. We have kids going out, but we always get kids coming. Um, mm-hmm. Right now, I'm, I'm, next year, I'm thinking about five out just because uh, it's easy to teach. Uh, and I'm big on it. We'll, we'll probably lose a lot of height and be small next year. So I'm thinking of an uh, office of system that they can come in, learn quick, because I'm probably going to get a kid transfers in. He, I'm a, he's going to show up. They're going to last year. I had five seniors show up in August who transferred in who weren't with us over the summer. So yeah, I'd work on, I'd work on like something like a dribble drive or something where you could just attack the rim, I think. Okay. Um, send me a summary of your team, like what you think your strengths and weaknesses are, and then I'll pull okay. something together for you. I got okay. an idea, but let me, okay. um, let me dwell on that. Let me dwell on that. Okay. Cause that, that's a little bit different cause you're going to have kind of a revolving door. So yeah. it's not like you're going to go, Oh, we're going to run this in sixth grade all the way to 12th grade. Yeah. You don't have those kind of kids. So let yeah. me, let me think I'll write myself a note and I'll think about that tomorrow. Okay. Thanks coach. Yeah, no problem. 
All right, go ahead, Mark. Yeah, uh, so my next question is related to uh, a lot of these teams that we have coming through our program are, are kids that are staying together. And yep. so we've got the same kids from fourth through eighth grade, and then we're sending them on to the high school. And so is there anything that you recommend as far as the, that we, you know, for coaches? That yep. are I would call, I would talk, I would talk to the girls and boys coach at the high school. We have done that. And we're, what do they say? It's we're weird. on the same page with them. We're, okay. We're, what, so, so do they want you to run anything specific or work? Um, and so, yeah, the girls coach has some stuff and the boys coach does as well. And that's, uh, you know, so there are some, some things, uh, that I know they, they run, both of them are similar. They run real fast paced yep. and, um, and high, high, uh, pressure defense, kind of, okay. you know, same, same thing. Yep. And, um, a lot of, uh, man to man, the boys especially run a lot of man to man. Okay. And, um, so I, and you know, that's what we want to focus on really at the yeah, I'd worry, level yeah. anyways. Yeah. That's and especially at that level, you want to play a lot of man and a lot. And, and to be honest with you, if you can shoot the ball, you can play. So Shooting. at any yeah. level, like to be honest with you, if you can shoot, you can play. So, you know, one of your jobs obviously is going to be the defensive part, but then another part would be um, uh, really getting them to be better shooters. So um, I don't know if the high school has any sort of like um, 10,000 shot club or something like that, or if you've thought about doing something like that. Um, when we started our youth program like eons ago, we did that, you know, um, where, you know, the kids would take shots on their own and then they would track it and their parents would sign for it and say when they did it and blah, blah, blah. And it just kind of got them in a routine of taking shots. Um, you know, you could do the 20,000 shot club, whatever you want, but um, something like that for a youth program can be very beneficial. Um, Cause the kids that really love it will do it. Some of them will lie too, but the good ones, will, <laughs> good ones will do it. And then sure. they'll get hooked. Um, it gives them something to do. A lot of them don't know what to do. They right. Want, they and it's like, and, and they're not sure. Yep. So you make up a plan, you know, every day you take 200 shots and you take, you know, 50 threes and you take 50 free throw. You I mean, you can make it up, whatever you, whatever. And that, that's where the high school coaches, like, what do you want? What do you want them? What do you want a seventh or eighth grader to be able to do? And then they'll tell you, well, I want them to be able to make free throws. I want them to be able to shoot off the dribble. I want whatever it is. I don't know what specifically offensively what they run. Um, but that's what I would, I would do something along that line, I think. Okay. That sounds great. Okay. Coach, you look too comfortable over there on your couch. Oh, man. I got to get comfy. Is it my turn? Yeah, it's your turn. All right. All right. So, um, I'm trying to already start planning about uh, coach my Disney thing. Cause he's lives in Orlando. Okay. Oh, go yeah. ahead. <laughs> so I'm, I'm uh, already starting to think about one of our main rivals will be probably um, that's good for league championship, but they have a guy that's kind of, he's thick, he's big. Yep. Um, and he can move a little bit. And I'm just trying to already think about my team. That's going to be probably averaging about six, one, um, but is not going to have a guy that's six. This guy's probably about six, two and about two fifty, And he's got a little motor on him. He's not a shooter, but he can drive. And I'm just trying to think, how do you attack somebody? How do you, how do you hey, stop somebody like pay, that? You don't. Well, first of all, you wear them out. <laughs> okay. Um, pace of play. So your team next year, I think is going to be pace of play. Okay. You want to go fast. Yes. You want to, you want to get it up yes. the court. Yeah. You, you don't necessarily want to run the system or Grinnell but you want to push the limits of get it up first open shots, you know, um, I think pace of play is the way you can neutralize somebody like that. And then we, you and I can come up with some combination defensive things that can kind of mess with him. Um, but, uh, and that's where the, the, again, full circle, that's where the Dr. Dish comes in. Cause you can like, you can work on shooting those threes. You can work on attacking the rim. You can get reps up because that's what that's what I would be selling the boys in the offseason is 
you thought we went fast last year. We're going to go faster this year, but we all have to be in shape and we all have to be able to shoot threes. Because mm, I'm assuming okay. they can all attack the rim, if I remember yes. anything about your team. Yeah, yeah, my team is the same. It's the same. Yeah, your, your team can all attack the rim. I'm not worried yeah. about that. But they can't consistently shoot threes. No, they cannot. And they can't shoot them fast. And they can't, like, so they, you want, you want to convince them, and this is the best, the best shot happens in the first seven seconds on the, from defense to offense. So that seven seconds is your best open shot most of the time. And you want to tell them, I want to open the door up. So if you're open from three, you can shoot it. But if you don't put the time in, I can't do that. Mm. So let's get in. Let's get shots up. Let's keep track of them. I don't know. Go get a board and have them keep track of how many shots they've taken. It's all okay. mental. Who? Again, it, it is how many shots they make. No doubt about it. It's not how many shots they take. But you mentally can get in like we're going to take 20,000 shots this summer or 15,000 shots then when you come back to the November or October when you start and you go hey remember all those shots we took we're the best shooting you got to convince them of things that maybe aren't necessarily true like eat your vegetables eat your vegetables you know they're good for you you should eat them kind of thing um yeah but, okay, let me let me ask you about defense because last season <clears throat> our defense, I mean, we went fifteen and seven. We had a pretty sec- came second in league. You had a nice um, team last year. You had a nice yeah, team yeah. last year. Yeah. yeah, it was it was a good team. Um, but my we basically ran man defense. You know, keep uh, one arm's distance. But we I never really got into the. I'm wondering if I'm making a mistake not bringing in a pack line or just building on what i've already got i think you should i think you should push baseline we do that okay we do push baseline but we didn't we didn't do we don't do i always hear you talk a little bit about pack line and am i missing a boat here should i just build on what i've got i don't think your league has that many great three-point shooters right no no so what do you want so where so they had you so we, we, you and i can talk about pack line pack line might be and then we can we can tweak it a little bit with the funnel i think and trap in that short corner so i think yeah you and i will talk well, well you and i'll get on a one-on-one and talk about some some tweaks yeah, some tweaks i think with that would okay. help i think that would be good um yeah let me i'll add that to, i'll add that to my other list yes i'll do that um yeah, I think that would work. I think because I, you, you, you want to basically not let anybody shoot anything in the paint. I think I don't want layups. Paint. I don't want layups. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're not so, going to shoot pull up twelve footers anyway. But you basically, so the 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 line in the sand that you want to draw is nothing in the paint, no shots in the paint, ever. Probably okay. pack lines a little bit more than that, but that would work for you, I think. Let me yeah. play with that. Okay. Yeah, and one other thing on we've gone through. You and I have talked a lot about read and react versus the zone, and so I finally have gotten the kids to be able to at least do through the second level of read and react as okay. you sent me. So we're finally getting there. But I actually um, in our practice last week we actually ran read and react. I think sort of successfully versus a zone. And I want to ask you, just kind of remind me, will read and react ver- work versus any zone, just passing and cutting, cutting through that zone, you know, dribbling at, I mean, just continuous cutting. Do you think that that works? I do. Okay. But you, but you have to teach them that, that when they cut through that and they find openings, they got to sit in those openings and they need to um, stop. They cut for just the sake of cutting. And they're not cutting to stop and find open space. You know what I'm saying? So you have to teach them to like the point of cutting is to find an open space so you can shoot. <laughs> That's what you have to convince them of. Okay. So um uh yeah, you just wanna you wanna make sure that they know that the cutting isn't just for cutting the cutting is to find an open space so I can pass you the ball so you can score. Okay. And they, they just keep cutting. They keep moving. Like it's like Forrest Gump kind of thing. They're just running like for the sake of running. It's like, stop. 
You're open. If they stop and they don't get the ball within thousand one, you got one second. Thousand one, 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 one thousand, you're out. If you don't get the ball in one second, it's going to be a turnover. Maybe All two. Right. So if you cut into an open space, you don't get it in a second. Just keep you moving. You stop. Out. You stop. You see if you get it. If you don't get it, you get out. Okay. So then you get out back to your out five out. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. So because if you sit there, you're going to say, I'm open, I'm open. And then grandma's going to yell, you're open. And then they're going to pass and it's going to be a turnover and a dunk in the other direction. Okay. That's literally what happens all the time. <laughs> Maybe not, but it seems like that's what happens a lot. Yeah. Okay. All right. One more question, everybody. And then I got to go. I got some sushi sitting in the kitchen right now. I'm wow. super excited. Sushi in Wisconsin is not like sushi in San Diego or Florida. Um, but <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, they fly it in. So it's pretty good. Anyway, <laughs> does anybody else have questions? Uh, uh, just how many practice sessions would it take you to put in the pack line? Like a week, a week. So it's not, okay. You simplified it. So it's not that I've, I've looked into it. I've bought a couple, um, championship production, uh, videos on it, but well, let's, know. let's get on a we'll get on a call because you the two of you want that we'll yes. set something yeah. up and we'll i would get love on. to learn done. from you done 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 okay done that's easy okay all right next cool yeah we'll do a pack line that would be fun and then i can put it out uh, yeah all right so maybe even next weekend if you guys are free um okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah that works think, i'm free because my daughter and son and wife are going somewhere so my daughter's going to a drama camp for a couple weeks so yeah that might work okay so let me i'll put that tentatively on my schedule done okay cool all right 